Welcome back. We're looking at Bolt again today. I'm going to talk about subcircuits. So there's a couple different main use cases for subcircuits. One would be downloading manufacturer's models and easily plugging them in to the model with a subcircuit. And the other would be to you can use a subcircuit to make schematics kind of within schematics and organize it so that you don't have too many parts on the top level schematic. So here we are with a new project and we'll do a 12 volt to 5 volt linear regulator here for this example. So we got a 12 volt input here and we'll put an out, put load, we can do a filter and we need a ground node. And then for the linear regulator, we're going to use this sub circuit. So the sub circuit is a special component right here, the sub circuit, and it has some things that other components don't have, like you can move the pins around and you can change the size of it. So we'll right click on it, do settings, and we're gonna add an extra pin here. So just this little plus, and we're gonna call it ground. And this is the ground pin. So now we have three pins for our linear regulator. So I was looking at linear regulators here, and this one's pretty cool, this 317, one and a half amps, 40 volts, and it's the three terminal, but the third terminal is actually this feedback adjustment pin here that goes to this voltage divider, so you can set the output. So that's kind of interesting, and it does have a SPICE model. So we're gonna download that. So it should be here in this lib file. Oh, well, here it is, and oops, it looks like this is the encrypted model here. So you can see you can't read the netlist, it's just a bunch of numbers. So that's not going to work. Oh, they do have here unencrypted SPICE model, so we can download that. There, that's better now, so we can read the netlist here. So I'm going to go Control a Control c copy all this text, we can go back over here and I'm going to right click and go, well I could right click and do template or we could just double click on here and notice that the definition type right now is set to text, which is the default. So if we double click in here, now we have this template here. We can make a new line and paste in here and we're going to need one of these net lists too. Sometimes it automatically puts one in, but there's not one here right now. So we could also paste the model in here under models. Uh, but since there's only one of these components, I'm just going to put it in here. Where you run into a problem is if you start copying and pasting this, then you end up with multiple models if you attach it to the subcircuit itself right here. So now to make this work, we need to adjust this template line here to sync up with the sub-circuit here. So the first thing we can do is put this name into the value property over here, the sub-circuit name. So that's linked up, and then we gotta get the pins in the right order. So this one goes in, adjust, out one, out two, and our model goes, you can look here, is pin one, pin two is out, and pin three is ground. And we're going to chain to this ground pin, so that'll be the adjust pin. So we want to move three. We can do it multiple ways. We could move this one over here like this, or what we can do is we could make three be the output, and then we just need to go in here and go to the settings and move these around. So we can move this one up and make it pin two, and we can call it adjust. So I just noticed this little bug here. It looks like it wrote ground and adjust over the same spot here. It's got like two labels. So this is a good time to save it. And now that it's saved, we can do control R. All right, so that double label is gone. Now we can wire everything up. So we'll hit W. Actually, let's move these around a little bit. OK, 
can label these parts and the nets. We can save this and see if it runs. So you notice here ng spice popped up but it didn't finish and that's a signal of it having an error so we'll stop and quit that and then we get our log here so error no such function if so the issue we're running into is that this model here is a pspice model and pspice syntax is slightly different in some cases than ng-spice. So if we go to the ng-spice manual here, there's this section on compatibility, and this talks about the differences between pspice and lt-spice and ng-spice, and it has some stuff here like functions that you can define that aren't included by default. This, also, this doesn't mention the if function, which also um, is our main problem here. But you can go through this and figure out how to change the model. Luckily, there is this under apps, there's this pspice to ng-spice converter, which does most of the work for you. So if you just get this text selected as the active tab, then you can go pspice to ng-spice. And this clean one, it just kind of gets rid of all the extra lines and white spaces, but this cleans it and converts it. So now it's been converted. You can see it added this function up here. And I'm going to move this down just so I've got the template at the very top. And then when it converts it, it changes it to a separate text document. So it doesn't automatically overwrite it. So this is the updated model. So you have to go control A, copy that, and then we're going to go back into here and paste it in here. Now I got to be careful not duplicate those and I'll save this. So now let's see if that works. All right, so it ran. Now it can do V out. All right, so we're getting 1.25 volts out. So let's see if that makes sense. So go back here. We want to find the data sheet. We can see here the output voltage is 1.25 volts to 37. So it looks like we're on the right track. So this 1.25 should be the internal reference voltage of the chip. And yep, here it is. Reference voltage, 1.25 volts. So if we want to scale this output to be 5 volts, we need to put a voltage divider in and make this multiplied by 4. So to do that, we can put resistor divider off of the output here, and we'll just scale them these aren't exact resistor values, but let's just say 3K on the top and 1K on the bottom. We can delete this one and reconnect it here. And now we got 1.67 volts. And see, I think I did this backwards, because normally when you have a resistor divider for feedback, you're looking at the voltage on the bottom resistor, but this one's actually looking at the voltage on the top resistor. So I think this needs to be one on the top and three at the bottom. There we go, We've got five volts out. Okay, I'm gonna save this as a new file and then go over how to change this into a schematic subcircuit. So if you look at the settings for this subcircuit, notice the type is text. So if we want to change this to a schematic, you click on here and you can choose either schematic subcircuit or schematic direct. And we'll just do subcircuit for now. So once we do that, you'll notice it added this params column here, 
where you can check this box and it'll turn property values into params for the subcircuit. So now if we double click on here, it's gonna take us into a new schematic instead of to the template. So these are the pins here that are the input, adjustment, and output. So we can move these around. So I'm thinking to make a real simple LDO, we'll use a power FET and one of these simple op amps. And we'll need a reference voltage. So this is gonna be same 1.25 volts. R to rotate. All right, we can do shift tab to close these extra windows, get some more space here. And then what we're gonna want is, we'll rotate this, we're gonna want this um, op amp to control this P channel FET. And then this reference is going to come off of the output and go here to the positive terminal. So draw it like this. And then this is gonna come around here, sort of to the output, which will be here. And this is the input. So now we can save this and we can get the Check out the netlist by double clicking or hitting tab. This just shows the netlist of this sub circuit. Go back here, view the full netlist. Now we can see here is the sub circuit and here's the parts inside of it. So now let's run this and see what happens. So we can see here that it's letting basically the full input voltage through. It's not. Uh, reducing it to 5 volts. So this isn't working and that's probably a threshold issue. So we can look at this amp simp model. If we go back here into the netlist end amp simp here has a high voltage of 4 volts. So let's increase that to be more like 12 volts so it can go up to the full uh, power rail here. All right, now it's working. So now it's clamping it at five volts. So we can do zero comma 10, and that'll show zero to 10 on the Y axis. So we have five volts. So now if we go back here to the net list, you can see this is what the sub circuit is doing in this configuration. So it has the sub circuit statement and then it's got these three parts inside. Now you can see that the in node here is going through into the sub circuit. So these names are getting propagated down inside of here, these input pins. So now if we change this, this configuration here direct We go back in here, you can see instead of being wrapped in a sub circuit now, it's just added this underscore x1 to the parts. So it's just directly injecting it into the net list without wrapping it in a sub circuit. And then it's got the internal nodes of the sub circuit renamed to have an underscore x on them. Now we can run this and see we've got the same result. So while I was doing this tutorial, I ended up updating a few things which should flow through to the uh, next update. So if you already downloaded it, it should auto update, but you might have noticed I added this extra button here for uh, to get the net list. So now you can either double click, you can hit that button, or you can do simulator net list. Or I also made it so you can hit tab. So if you hit tab, it'll open the net list and then uh, it toggles it. So tab toggles it and then this button toggles it too. 
and you can also do shift tab to clear the area and then I made it so that it does real-time updating of the wires and nodes and stuff when you drag things. I also made it so that the labels rotate nicer. Oh, I forgot to mention to get the voltages and stuff that are inside of subcircuits, you just use a dot. So you can see these dots are for subcircuits that are written inside here, like the simplified op amp. But uh, if we right click on here again and we change this, because this is a direct right now, if we do it back to subcircuit, then you can see we have dot x1, dot x1. So that's x1 is this, and the next x1 is this. So that's treeing down in here. And then if you wanted to do like uh, the voltage at this node, you can do another one here. You can do like v of x1 dot 6. That's the voltage here. And the other thing I added is now you can move these labels around if you want to. And then it reminds you which uh, which wire it's connected to. And that's only if you're doing the view sum here on the net names. If you do all, it just shows one per wire. And also you can press the spacebar and that'll, if you hold down the spacebar, then it'll show you all of the labels just if you want to look at them real quick. And then if you want to reset one of these, you just click it and you hit the delete key and then it will go back to its original auto placement. So that's the overview of sub-circuits. I'll put some links in the description of things we talked about. And let me know if you got any questions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.